All right, everybody, thanks for uh, coming to this September 2022 monthly meeting for Rocky Mountain Rugby Referees. Uh, we've pushed it one day. Typically, we, we do the first Monday of every month, uh, but thanks to Labor Day, um, we've pushed it. So um, let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to open up with is um, registering with USA Rugby. So we'll bring this up at the top at the end of the meeting, so that way Larry remembers to do it. Um, but it's I sent out an email about Rugby Explorer. Um, everybody should have. We'll have that in their inbox. We'll also send it as part of the meeting notes uh, tomorrow. Um, but that's you, you have to do it. It's the equivalent of SIP from years past. It's through Sports Lomo. You have to do it. Uh, there's going to be two parts uh, that you're going to have to comply with because they haven't enforced the complying. Um, and that is you have to do rugby ready and you have to do concussion awareness. Um, both of these expire every two years and they have not requested you to do it um, in about five. So <clears throat> uh, rugby ready, uh, that took... That took me about two hours uh, to complete, and I didn't watch the videos. I just read the information. Um, so definitely something to keep track of uh, time-wise. Um, we will be doing an audit of everybody that is in ref up and making sure that they have complied with the Rugby Explorer event, uh, sooner rather than later. And then if you're not up to, up to snuff, then you're not considered up to snuff and we'll uh, remove you. Um, not something that I want to do, but that's how we comply with our end of the insurance. Um, are there any questions from the gallery here on on Rugby Explorer, SIP, how all that kind of stuff works? Just to let everybody know, when I went and registered, it had I think my date of birth wrong, and I was unable to change it. I had to contact USA Rugby, which was almost impossible. <coughs> they don't have any phone numbers on their website, and they the link to membership on the website is invalid. Um, but eventually I got a human over there because I have direct contacts, and they fixed it. So it's not the most important thing in the world, but you might want to check and make sure your, all your information is correct. Yeah, all that stuff needs to be legally required um, and up to date. Uh, if they don't, that's what they utilize for insurance purposes. And if you don't, if it doesn't completely gel, then there might be an issue. They also do background checks based on that. So it's, that's kind of an important thing too. Yep. Uh, which we're all required to do once every five years or something like that. that two. Two. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. I just let it run and do whatever it tells me to get the green checks box. Um, so then we're going to talk about now we're going to talk about that was a quick, quick little ditty. Um, the next thing is um, we've We've started the season. Congratulations to everybody that's gotten a game in already. Um, uh, I look forward to my first game in two weeks. Um, but everybody, everybody has to know the process. So the first step is making sure that you're signed up with Ref Up. If you're not, please go in to Ref Up and um, get logged in. Then we will assign you a match level. If you look at your match level and you think that you're um, lower to too low um, and we haven't had a conversation in the past year, um, please, please hit us up. Um, Chris Brewer is the RDO, the community RDO. He would be the best person to um, contact. Uh, that is RDO at Rocky Mountain Rugby Refs. Dot com. The other person to communicate with is uh, Brian Zapp. He is the high performance RDO. That's HPRDO at 
the same handle. Um, and finally, the other person to talk to um, would be the rest of the executive committee that is um, EXEC um, dot COM M. Just reply back to the uh, the email that I send out tomorrow, um, and and you'll get somebody. Uh, after you get assigned to a game, running through the whole ref up process, you'll then do contacts. And I'm going to let ops take that away with uh, how that that whole situation works. Yeah. So uh, if you've if you've won an assignment, won a bid on an assignment, um, well, let me let me start with this. First of all, uh, based on the level that the RDOs and and you've qualified for, then that will dictate what kind of games that you'll see. So that kind of leads me to there are a lot of games out there right now for all levels to uh, bid on. Um, Rugby Colorado has quite a few high school games, right? They have 13 referee requests for this weekend alone. So um, all levels are represented out there. There's plenty of opportunities for, for um, our newer refs to get games as well as experienced ref, refs to get games. Um, you go out there and you bid, um, bid on a game. You have these things called boosts, and I'm not even get into how you earn boosts and all that kind of stuff. But um, if it's a game that you really, really want because it's in town or whatever, then you kind of um, like, almost like an auction, a silent auction. You put in more boosts to try to win that game if you can. Um, and then depending on when that game was put into ref up, then the system automatically assigns it based on um, the, the, the time before the game actually starts. So if it was put in during the week before the game started, then you won't know if you won that, that bid until Wednesday. Um, if it was put in long beforehand, then you probably have about 10 days to know that you won that bid. Um, nonetheless, that gives both you and the home team plenty of opportunity to know uh, where the game is actually going to be played because as you know, details often change. So my number one thing is look for a confirmation email from the home team um, within 72 hours prior to the match. Um, that's every single week. So if you are assigned to a game and you do not receive your confirmation email from the team saying our game's on, it's at Jacobs Park and it's at noon, um, then please let me know um, so that I can send them a nasty gram. It won't be nasty, but um, at least the first one per season is just a quick reminder, reminding them of their responsibility to confirm the matches because uh, uh, like happened last week, a match was not canceled in ref up. No confirmation was ever sent and the referee showed up to nothing. And so nobody wants that. Um, that, that sucks to make the drive and, and all of that because of a team's irresponsibility. So um, always look for that confirmation and uh, send something to me so that I can um, give them a chance to comply. And if they haven't complied by Friday night, then, you know, it's kind of up to you if you want to just not go <laughs> um, or you can reach out to your, them yourself, whatever. But the, the point is, is that we need everyone to kind of get into the, the rhythm again of, of doing this confirmation to avoid happen, things that happened like last week. Um, that's, the, that's the basic uh, workflow, I suppose, with RefUp. If you guys have any questions, then always reach out to me or you know anybody on the executive committee can help you with that. And please, um, <clears throat> the onus is on the team to have this set up ahead of time. Um, it's not on the referee society to make sure that their paperwork is in order. Um, and that includes make, uh, doing the online process. Um, if you know of a game that's about to happen, definitely reach out to the executive committee, specifically Paul and myself, because we're making sure that they're utilizing the system properly. Um, that also goes for games that are off book, um, games that are being conducted by, by the teams um, that are not going through the referee society. So we, the referee society has the responsibility to make sure that our referees are adequately trained. Um, we have a big, we have a big push this year to make sure that people are coached more. Um, that might mean video. That also might mean in-person coaching with Jim showing up. 
like or or Joe showing up. There's there's all those options, um, but <clears throat> removing a match from the clearinghouse that is Rocky Mountain Rugby referees um, removes our ability to pay for these these gentlemen to go out and and look at you. Um, the teams don't pay for the ref coach to go out. The society does, and that's based off of our our cut, um, uh, so to speak, um, when it goes out there. So please make sure that you have that, you, you, you take the ownership and, and say, hey, you know, Team X, I realize that you want me to be your referee because for whatever reason, um, but let's go through the referee society. <clears throat> and if it's not a league match, we can make sure that you get assigned. Um, league matches are a little bit trickier because we want to make sure that there's no impartial, uh, there's a uh, impartiality when it comes to it. So, um, that's, that's something definitely to be, to be tracking, um, especially as this season goes on. Are there any questions on use of ref up? We can talk more about, uh, how to actually win a game. Hey, I haven't won a game in a while, that kind of thing. Um, we can have a, we can have a private chat about that. Um, we have, we've already talked with, uh, Jonah being out in Gunnison, make sure that he gets some games, um, when he's available. No. Fantastic. So uh, the next thing that we have is, uh, let's see, what's the next? What's the next thing that we want to talk about? Mark, you got um, you got your bits and pieces about um, how Aspen is setting up coming coming up next weekend. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, uh, everyone has got should have gotten the referee information packet that's been invited to Aspen. And I will send that off to the hotels. I have a schedule, uh, preliminary schedule up from Aspen and I'll start filling in assignments and whatnot. Um, there is, if we go to that Google doc now, sorry, let me get to the screen first. Do you need me to do that? Uh, nope. I have, I have even more tabs open than, than normal. And trust me, I don't want these mean tabs open either. I wish I could get away with no tabs. But uh, first and foremost, we are having that C1 registered. So I just checked today, we just have four people registered, Joe, Paul, uh, da, 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 Brian Kelly, and who's the other one? Brian, Chris, uh, Brian, Chris Brewer. No, Chris Brewer is not registered. Brian Kelly, oh, uh, Freon is the other one. So uh, those who have taken the class before, like uh, Joe, Joe Zevin, Mark Huff, Paul Pettit, Jim Russell, they are listed as auditing, obviously Peter Watson as well. Um, so um, those who are willing to take this class, Noah, Phil Schwann, Chris O'Malley, Chris Brewer, Dale Bruno, and Angela Bruno, and Phil Schwann, I think I've already said you, I need you to get in there. A, register through Rugby Explorer to get set up in USA Rugby. And then you can go to, once you're on Rugby Explorer, you can go to your learning center, click on your name. And then you can see the course catalog right here. Um, and then you should be able to select CMO. My, my catalog is a little bit different than yours because I'm an educator, but, but uh, you can click on this course right here and you should be able to find the one that's in Aspen and add to your cart. And then you can check out. It's $85 and once you uh, take the course and do three coaching reports, I'm sure Rocky Mountain rugby referees will pay for you pay for that course or you'll get that money back in coaching report fees anyway. So 
now that we have taken or putting on a CMO one, um, I've had some people who are not going to Aspen uh, ask when we're going to do another CMO one, and that's a great question. Uh, we can do it as long as we have 10 participants. So I'd like to do another one probably in the spring. Um, and uh, we are hosting a level one session for referees coming up in Glendale on Sunday around the 16th or 17th of October, I believe. Yep, six, it, it, I believe and that's, 16th and that's, uh, that is that's a, here, right. level one. And that's down here on 1016 in Glendale. So if Mike Lawrence wanted to hammer out the details for being recruiting, here's some, here's, here's how you register for that. Um, I'll jump in there real quick, just because um, we had one, had this course before and it got yeah. because we had only seven registers. So you guys could help me out. I'm trying to get those seven to come back, but I need three more. So if you know of anybody from teams that you're associated with or friends that want to become referees, perfect time. Yes, <laughs> this is everyone's job. I say this every year. It's not Mike Lawrence's job to recruit. It's all of our jobs to recruit. This, this is the level one class? Yeah. This is the level one on 10 Where is it? It's going to be in Denver? In Glendale. On the okay, cool. I got I got two guys on my team that want to do that. Perfect. It's, and again, it's like, it's under your, if you go to your Rugby Explorer, click on Learning Center, and then it's under courses, right? On the course catalog. And you click on level one, you can find all the level ones going on. And if for some reason you're going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina that day and have some people want to take it there, you can go there too, however it gets done. The one in Denver is going to be hosted by Mark Nelson, and uh, I've heard it's a solid 7 out of 10. So <laughs> I don't know who's teaching that. I would imagine I'm going to teach it. Yeah, I click, if you click it, your name pops up. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Oh, there you go. I guess I'll be teaching that one, which is actually technically a level two <laughs> when I teach it. So. Um, and then, so now that we, <clears throat> uh, now that you become a, a member of USA Rugby, you will get an ad, you will get a login for uh, this website right here, which is Advantage Live uh, Referee Review Software. So most of you have seen this and we won't go through this right now. But for those that haven't, this is our, this, this is a, a great database to kind of put everything you want up there as far as like your development pathway, your focus plans, things you're working on, kind of how, um, here's your focus areas. You can add your performance track, your development plan. Those are in the national pool pathway have done this. Um, and it's a good little bit. So if you have any, we can, if you're coming up to Aspen, we can take a look at this as well. And then also for those who are doing coaching reports and video or video review, these can also be done in there. And I know there's a couple of people that don't like this. So I have also created this form um, that, hold on, just gonna find it. And, and while, while Mark's looking that up, the I just looked up the schedule, the master schedule for um, the men. I have a common schedule for the men's clubs here in Denver, and there is only one team that is. There are two teams that are playing on the 16th. Everything else is a built-in buy for all clubs. The only the only two teams that are playing are Haggis and versus the Barbarians. Um, Maybe we'll even make that a uh, part of the trip, and we can go, you know, look at look at refereeing or something like that. But that is something that we should be aware of, um, please. So, so I have taken um, our newly like kind of ranking system of how we are wanting to develop referees with the match levels, which we will send out as well, and put that into a Google form. So let's just say, Joe Zevin, I know you're going to go look at uh, Noah this weekend, I believe. Um, Call him a 
Oh, helmet. That's what it is. Yeah, helmet, which is awesome. We definitely need to get eyes on him. I was going to look at um, Phil if someone wanted to go look at Mike and at Glendale. That would be great. Um, I could put some coaching things on there, but I got to I got to tidy this up a little bit and test it. But essentially, if you if we just put like the RDO email here, um, it'll come it'll come back to RDO. And that way Chris can get it and the executive can get it. And then you can put your name, you know, your email, uh, Mike Lawrence in, his email, the, and then the date, the kickoff time, the teams, location, easy, easy. And then basically you just, uh, on your pre-match discussion, you discuss what the referee was working on, their SMART goals, right? And then here's like a reminder of they're a level nine, they should be working on these competencies. You pick their, you pick their level, and then that automatically comes down to one of these. You pick their level and then how their fitness was and any comments of like things they could work on about their fitness or something that they've done well, or maybe just one, one, one or two minor safety things if, if that, that did come up. And then it'll go to their match levels, which you can click on the spreadsheet to review the thing that the RLC put out. And basically if they were working on scrum setup and touch and goal as their, their match levels, then did they achieve it? Do they need a little bit of help? Do they need some serious help or was it not a goal? And then just give them some advice on how to get a little bit better. And that should take you five minutes to fill out this form. And again, this has all the companies in here, but if you select the referee's match level, it'll go to the specific one. And then the very end of it, you could just type in down here, just some actionable items, you know, try and, try and do this workout or try and do this thing for scrums or go to whatever your advice for them to get a little bit, a little bit better, 1% better the next match. So um, I will make sure this gets uh, uh, on the website under, under um, procedures and we can talk about using this up in Aspen and or using advantage it's really kind of I, I really don't care how the sausage gets made as long as the sausage gets made you know so you have two new options uh whether you like advantage great go in there or whether you want to go on a google form happy days and then at the end of the seasons we can look at these and go oh i see that michael lawrence is really achieving in level seven let's push him up to level six or whatever how it is and that's what we can base our hard data on that is, uh, that, is a question? That, that is definitely part of the, 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 the feedback that I've received um, from people is, is how do I move from level what A to level B? How do I move forward? And, yeah. and that is, and we're, we're working on it, folks. The, there's, there is a few number of people that that's what, that they're really working hard to make sure that the society runs and we're developing and moving on with the time. Um, so please keep that in mind. Um, if you don't like the way that something's working or you have other suggestions, um, please, please, please uh, send, send a message uh, to somebody and, and get the ball rolling. Um, we're, we're all ears and we're, we, can, we can help. Uh, yeah, so that's that's regarding like creating more coaches and creating more uh, pathways for the coaches to get referees a little bit better, right? Um, I'll also put the link in there. Am I still sharing the screen? No, you're not. Yes. Um, also put the link in there for the match levels, which I'm sure we've all seen before, but I'll go ahead and put that in there in the chat. Yeah. Okay. Uh well, while we're talking about the match day experience, um, one thing that we did talk about uh, in the last of, at the last meeting, um, if everybody remembers, that was our longer discussion with um, the the management people from USA Rugby. One of the major topics was, um, and I realize I'm very dark, but. Um, one of the major topics was referee abuse. Um, 
we 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 had at least we've had one referee kind of start a process. Uh, the major thing that I wanted to talk to everybody about was making sure that fill it out and ref up, and also send send an email to the executive committee. We will make sure that the ball gets rolling and sometimes getting it from a person, getting an email from a person as opposed to an automated system like ref up um, gets that ball rolling a little bit faster. Um, we're still working through it um, with this, with this one person, um, but rest assured we are, we're on the case. So I hope everybody uh, understands that. Is, are there any questions on Mark's CMO pro practice and policy? And then we can also roll into ref abuse. Yeah, and uh, one of my, one quick thought is like, hey, you know what? I'm a great referee. I never get abuse or it doesn't bother me or I have tough skin. Um, I, I, I understand that, but you're not stopping the ref, the, the match official abuse for yourself. You're stopping the matchable match official abuse for the guy next week, for the new ref that comes on board. That, yeah, great. You did that one team and they were a little chirpy or whatever. And you could take it because, you know, you were this type of player or that kind of referee or you make all the great calls. That's great. But the, the person that comes along next may not make all the great calls. And we can't afford because there's 15 people on this call, we can't afford to lose many. You, we, we used to have a, set, a society of 70 strong and, and it's, you know, <laughs> COVID got us. So we need to stamp out referee abuse. Uh, some of the things that we we're trying to do to get more referee is, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're paying you guys professionally now. Like we're paying you a nice wage to get out there and get it done. And uh, we're trying to put on the clinics. We've come up short a few times because uh, we can't allow walk-ins and it's just it was a little tough to register those clinics through Sport Lomo. And now we got rid of Sport Lomo. And now we have Rugby Explorer. So things are happening and, and hopefully we can get, we can get going. Um, and then uh, do we want to talk about the education piece of this call? Uh, which... You... The, the goal line drop out in the loss. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll we're gonna we'll roll right okay. in in a, in a in a second. But um, yeah, I'll I'll give a give a second while everybody's sitting here to find their unmute button if they want to talk about ref abuse or our policies around that. What do we do if it's not the players or the coaches that are ref abuse, but it's like the sideline? If it is if it is a coach, then you get the name, and actually, that's um, more in line with the incident that we're we're kind of working our way but through. That, I mean, no, what if it's not a coach and it's not a player? It's like the parents. <sighs> that's that is definitely more tricky. Um, I would talk with you. You talk with um, the coaching staff. You talk with the captain, um, and then you like if if you think that it's 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 necessary and i hope that you do you get the you try to get that person's name um especially if it's a confrontation um then then take care of it that let us take care of it that way um that's that is part of our job here is to make sure that everybody gets to referee and and not have to be accosted um on the day so I um, haven't looked at this in a while, but USA, I think in the game management guidelines, but I'm not sure, used to have a, a procedure where if somebody on the sidelines is given the ref unmitigated grief, the ref tells the captain, shut that guy up. And then if he doesn't, you tell the captain second time, shut it up or this game is over. And if it still doesn't happen, the game's over and you can modify that i guess if you've got a sympathetic or reasonable coaching staff where you've got some you know you're dealing with a high school kid who can't really tell a parent to be quiet so you go to the coach but those were at one point the usa procedures 
Yeah, yeah, you're right, Jim. So essentially, like if you do have if you do have someone who's not on the playing enclosure, right? Um, giving you abusing you. You and again as an adult, if you're playing in a in a college or club level, you can go to that captain and 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 they can they can talk to the coach and say, hey, we're not going to continue this game if I'm going to if I'm going to get abused like that. In high school, it's a little bit more difficult to have a high school captain confront another coach. It's a it's not a it's not a great position to put that 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 person in. So maybe you could go to that coach or 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 and say, listen, you know, I'm 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 here doing the best I can. I I'm not going to continue with this level of abuse. So please warn them, um, warn them, you know, a second time if you have to. And if you have to abandon the match, we will back you 100%. Um, so yeah, there's just no place in rugby and its values for match official abuse at all. Please, please don't, please don't cut the high school's extra slack or something because really the abuse that i take it's never from club level guys like they know if i tell them to stop they stop it's always high school and it's always the sidelines and it's just got to stop man um just to inject something in my role as a discipline guy i can tell you that individuals who are not who are parents you know, fans have been disciplined. You know, you shall not show up for the next month, six months, year or longer. Clubs have been disciplined for not controlling their spectators. Um, but all this starts with the ref, A, trying to stop it at the time, but B, reporting it, as Joe was saying earlier. Okay. We can't help you if we don't know. And I as much as I would love to be able to go to every single, every single person's match, um, I can't. <laughs> so I can't find out unless you tell us. Um, so there was a fight this summer at the last sevens that the Quins hosted. Did anything really come out of that? So I know me and Spencer both kind of put that in our post-match reports. Which? The uh, summer sevens. Yeah, that really like super social sevens. We're just doing like half field. And there was a fight at the very last game of the very last tournament. Did you uh did you submit a red card for that? I just called the game at that. And then okay. the same guy was walking down the sideline and started a brawl amongst another team. Oh, and I was good. told that player was not affiliated with any team hmm. awesome. yeah that's a special case because it's the summer set it's like a social not really a sanctioned event so to speak and uh, none of the players out there are really on any kind of sipped team for that it's very that's why it's social um so it's kind of hard for us to to do a lot about that it's it would have been and plus it's the last game of the season so the match organizers hunter and anthony and them um hopefully they took care of it somehow some way um regardless if that guy was there or not hopefully they um recognize the guy and and he doesn't participate in future summer sevens um but there's really not much we can do about that situation but if you you know recognize the guy from a, a team I, I mean not really a lot we can do about it unfortunately that's that is definitely one where it's um, like if you put it in a report, then it, it, it's like on our onus to read read the full report. But if you send it to us in an email, like, "Hey, the game. This is why the game was called at the at the conclusion," um, because even th there might not have been a you know you didn't issue a red card with that. There's no flag that's associated with that. I didn't, I, I didn't see that come through at all. So, um, yeah, we don't, uh, with that, go ahead. Rough up then, Jonas. Yep. It, I put that in the ref up one and I know Spencer did the same thing as well. 
Okay, we'll cycle back through that and, and uh, get with Steve and about wrap up and then um, we'll, we'll send that off to the organizers and see what they say about it. I mean, yeah. we, we, I, it's, it's, I don't want to just sit here and say, listen, there's nothing we can do about it. I, we'll try and right. do something about it because yeah. it, it needs, something needs to be done about it. If it's a true disciplinary report based on a yellow or red card, we definitely see those. But something like that that's kind of outside of that realm, um, we have to, it takes a little extra special effort. So just like you said, um, in the future, just send us an email and we'll, we'll have to go look for it. But um, we'll, we'll see what we can do to double back on it. Thanks for letting okay, us know. Yeah, I was just checking in to see if anything came from that. Yeah. yeah. That used to be one of our greatest uh, recruiting tools. <laughs> Is that, that, that league someone would abuse, abuse a referee and hit it at the referee throw a whistle at him and go all right next one um all right the last bit of administrative um the the, the last little bit of administrative things that i want to go through and then we're going to do a short education on the new um laws the the, the thing is, is that, so I posted earlier this uh, last month uh, that we have some NDG and RDG level referees. I'm not going to go through the whole list. Um, go back through your email and, and refer to that. Um, these are the people that are going to be giving back to our society as well. Um, that is part of uh, that is part of your uh, of the requirement of being on one of these panels. It's that's one of them. Um, part of it is fitness, and we did that. Um, but the main the main thing is giving back to your LRO. So uh, if you go back to your email, look at that list of list of people, and if you have if you're looking for a mentorship, those are definitely the people that you want to be hitting up. Um, they are not all of them. Some of them. Um, but not all of them are in um, <clears throat> roles um, within the society. If they're not, um, I would still, you know, have a casual have casual chat up um, and and talk to them about, you know, something that might be a part of your game. Um, what they're seeing, how do you get ready for a game? Um, I know that a, a fair number of them, part of that um, that that group, can't make these meetings. Um, so asking them to uh, present on like what their match day experience is like, um, it's basically going to be me talking, talking at you for a time. Um, and that's boring again. Um, but what I can what I can say is, is that if you hit somebody like that up, then you 100% can, uh, can um, get pride into the mind of a, a higher level referee um and maybe you can get there too with that mark is going to present on the 50 22 um and goal line dropout things that have been in place for about a year um but as we roll into the 15 season sometimes that might be getting confusing because they don't utilize those law variations uh in sevens mark take it away yep uh, so I'm just going to go through, I don't know if it's really the 5022, but it's the new law changes that came out in 2022. So give me one second, I'll try and find that. Here it is. No, that's not it. There we go. So again, I will provide these resources and we will provide them in the email and in um, at the end of the day. But here, we'll just run through some of these new law changes that came out in 2021 and 2022, which is, hey, this is this year. These came in effect uh, for this year coming in August, sorry, September 1. So everything that is in this document is in now in effect. Um, they said for July for the July test, but then USA Rugby rolled it out for the new registration cycle. 
so we uh, the goal line dropout 5022 um, getting rid of the flying wedge only having one latcher and then the jackaler protection um, without getting you know him getting hit on any certain joints or his head or neck all move into full law and then we also are allowing the hookers to have a break foot on, on the scrums. Actually, we're not allowing it, we're, we're demanding it. And that provides uh, stability and, and avoids axle loading in the scrums. So um, basically in your, free, in your front row chats, you should now be talking about the pre, um, the uh, break foot, which is great. Cause then when you're setting them up to be left of the mark at about four inches away, you can now use their break foot and that's your measurement for them being left of the mark and four inches away, which will give you the great spacing and prevent axial loading, right? So on crouch, their brake foot is there. On bind, their brake foot is there. And then only on set can they remove their brake foot and engage the scrum. Does anybody have any questions on that? No? Great. If people are confused about like, doesn't everybody do this? Basically everybody at the club level does this. Um, it is incredibly hard to, it, it's incredibly hard to not do. Um, but some older school style hookers might avoid it. Specifically the ones that are like, you know, five, two and shorter, uh, they might just kind of dangle there, but they are required to have that brake foot in place. Um, this is, <laughs> we, we won't really get into the water carriers so much and like the limited number. This is more, more of like for high performance or, or games at Glendale. But uh, essentially we're getting rid of like the teams bringing on water after scores is that the team who got scored on, they can have water brought to them. The team that just scored uh, can go to the sidelines and get water. Um, and then at higher level matches, there's two water breaks per half now. Um, but so we're just trying to speed up, play a little bit and, and getting water off. Uh, so the goal line dropout is added, um, except in sevens, obviously. So essentially if an attacking team brought the ball into end goal and didn't score a try and it was made dead or grounded by the defense, it's a goal line dropout essentially. And I have a chart which we'll send out. They've also kind of changed the, the ball emerging from a ruck law to a full on penalty. Um, well, it was a penalty before, but now it's diving on a ball near a ruck instead of while and when it's emerging. And then they made the ripper and long arm transfers and then the like kind of ripper sliding back into a mall, definitely a penalty um, in, those, in, those, in those line out to malls, right? And then just some minor things, just tidying up some, some verbiage, you know. Um, we, I will, again, I'll send all this out, right? Um, they changed some verbiage of the of the law of like if you're in the field of play you cannot take part of play when it used to be like a player off their feet can no longer take part of play and they changed some TMO protocol so um, I'm also going to share this screen with you here there's the USA Rugby put out a nice little goal line dropout permutations which I'm going to share and while Mark's pulling that up, folks, this is the type of stuff that more immediate knowledge of this type of thing, implementation of it correctly, this is the type of stuff that comes along with an increase in pay. You're, you're expected to know this stuff a little bit more crisply than, than somebody that's getting paid nothing. So please keep that in mind when you're deciding on studying uh, in goal permutations. Yeah, so essentially if the attackers bring it in, the defenders make it dead, 
right? Usually it's going to be a goal line dropout. Almost always. Any questions? Yes, JR here. Question about Hi, JR. the I question about the diving on the ball near the ruck. Is there a I guess measurement as a guideline that could be used? I would say if you so the we we've determined a meter as being near a ruck. Okay. So I would say a, a meet is like three feet away from that ruck. Okay. So within a, a meter, like kind of like that ruck is a circle, right? And then I would go like a three feet diameter radius around that circle, around that ruck. It, it's kind of like as soon as the ball comes out, you know, it's basically that scrum out that's diving on it immediately, just trying to slow the ball down. Yeah. Um, and also there was a presentation. They went through the uh, game management guidelines on a national call. Um, we will send that out to you as well. So you can go back and watch that. And we also send out the game management guidelines for this year, which is a great, great, great tool to use um, made by USA Rugby and advantage referees to um, of how we how we would like the game register refereed in in the U.S. Excellent, thank you. So you will have a lot of information in your email. Great, thanks. All right. Are there any questions? We have a new guest not guest, new referee. Do you want to unmute yourself, introduce yourself? Hi, gents, uh, Helmut Strumpfer here. Nice to meet you all and uh, looking forward to getting involved. Uh, used to referee a little bit back in the day, back in South Africa. Um, went to countries where I couldn't referee, there wasn't rugby. Uh, now in the US, I can referee rugby, so glad to be back. <sighs> Great, Helmut, good to finally uh, put a face to the to all the calls. I think uh, our friend Joe Zevin, who is uh, gonna come take a look at you. Um, Appreciate it, thanks Joe. So uh, again, we kind of just guessed on your level based on some some things. So uh, it'd be great uh, if you get a hold of Joe and just work on some stuff to give Joe something to do for your match to get you a little bit better. And then- no, um, yeah, Joe, Joe yeah. and I have, have made contact, given a couple of couple of outcomes. Also, yeah, hopefully this time we'll, yeah. we'll get on the field. Yes. <laughs> Joe is a, a wealth of experience and one of our best coaches. So Love it. um yeah, it'll be great yeah, for I'm you. Glad, glad that we're able to get you on the field. Uh that the last opportunity was hey, you got on the field, right? <laughs> yeah. You were free a flawless game, I heard for it. It was like perfect. <laughs> no penalties, lots of scoring in your mind. Yeah, awesome. Exactly. Uh Let's see what we have in the chat here. All right. Yeah. Anything else? Everybody um, speak now or forever hold your peace for how much are you aware of our kit policy and whatnot? We could have a side conversation, but uh um we'll get you going. Um send that out to you. We can get you designed up after about five matches. You could have about $165 worth of kit credit that yep. we will send you to our store and have you look in the part. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Cool. All right, everybody. Um, thank you for coming to this day delayed uh, meeting. Hope to see so many of you up in Aspen and the rest I'll see in the coming uh, months about the season. Paul, anything? Good. Uh, no, just uh, getting a ref up and put some bids out there. Um, most immediate need are some Rugby Colorado stuff this weekend. We've got a lot of needs and um, I need some help. So um, all the all the men's and college stuff are taken up this weekend. So if you're available, um, even for part of, part of the day, um, let me know or, or just put a bid in. We'll work it out on the field um, if you can only do, you know, half the day. Um, 
don't don't let that stop you. Um, go out there. And this is unusual for Rugby Colorado to have games in Denver. Usually they're out in BFE. So um, that don't that should actually be a better thing this time around. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but it, you at least utilize it to find your referee kit, right? Like this is a good opportunity to know which end of the whistle, remind yourself which end of the whistle to blow into, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. All right. Uh, as long as there's nothing else on the record, I will stop the recording here.